Good morning and welcome to St Andrew's Church in Corbridge to this service of the Word. Today we observe Bible Sunday as we give thanks to God for the gift of the Scriptures and pray that they may mould and inspire our Christian lives. And so with joy we proclaim, this is the day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let everything you do or say be done in the name of the Lord Jesus. Giving thanks to God through Jesus Christ. O Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Lord, direct our thoughts. Teach, Teach us, us to pray. pray. Lift up our hearts to worship you in spirit and in truth. Through Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. The Word of God is living and active. It judges the thoughts and intentions of the heart. All is open and laid bare before the eyes of him to whom we give account. We confess our sins and penitence and faith. Your word convicts us. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Your word commands us, repent and believe the good news. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Your word assures us, Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And the collect for today. Blessed Lord, who caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, help us so to hear them, to read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that through patience, and the comfort of your holy word we may embrace and forever hold fast the hope of everlasting life which you have given us in our saviour jesus christ who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the holy spirit one god now and forever amen, amen. may the word of christ dwell in you richly may the peace of christ rule in your heart we now listen to today's readings. A reading from 2 Timothy, chapter 3. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and firmly believed, knowing from whom you learned it, and how from childhood you have known the sacred writings that are able to instruct you for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, so that everyone who believes belongs to God may be proficient and equipped for every good work. In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, and in view of his appearing and his kingdom, I solemnly urge you, proclaim the message. Be persistent whether the time is favourable or unfavourable. Convince, rebuke and encourage with the utmost patience in teaching. For the time is coming when people will not put up with sound doctrine, but having itching ears, they will accumulate for, for themselves teachers to suit their own desires and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander away to myths. As for you, always be sober, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist, carry out your ministry fully. For the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Your words are spirit, Lord, and they are life. 
Alleluia. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus says, I have a testimony greater than John's. The works that the Father has given me to complete, the very works that I am doing, testify on my behalf that the Father has sent me. And the Father who sent me has himself testified on my behalf. You have never heard his voice or seen his form, and you do not have his word abiding in you, because you do not believe him whom he has sent. You search the scriptures, because you think that in them you have eternal life, and it is they that testify on my behalf. Yet you refuse to come to me to have life. I do not accept glory from human beings, but I know that you do not have the love of God in you. I have come in my Father's name, and you do not accept me. If another comes in his own name, you will accept him. How can you believe when you accept glory from one another and do not seek the glory that comes from the one who alone is God? Do not think that I will accuse you before my Father. Your accuser is Moses, on whom you have set your hope. If you believed Moses, you would believe me, for he wrote about me. But if you do not believe what he wrote, how will you believe what I say? This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you O Christ. Heavenly Father, inspire us as we think about your holy word this morning. Amen. Amen. When I was teaching, I had a girl called Emily in my class who was an avid reader. She was always back and forth to the library. So one day, I thought I'd just ask her what it was that appealed to her. Why was she attracted to a book? Was it the cover? The content? The blurb on the back? What was it? She looked aghast and said, I don't look at the cover. Sometimes the cover's rubbish. It's the story, it's the plot, the setting, the characters, and what happens to them. I like to read stories by different authors. If it's a good book, I imagine myself to be part of the story. That's what's important to me. Today is Bible Sunday. And for a few moments, we're going to think about the Bible and how we become part of that story, that great story. The Collect for Bible Sunday, which is the prayer before the first reading, talks about the Bible being written to help, to learn, help us to learn more, telling us we should hear, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest. A tall order to do all that simultaneously. Each week in church, our Bible readings are laid out in a booklet called the Lectionary, following a three-yearly pattern called Year A, B and C, each one focusing on one of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark or Luke, with sections from John's Gospel in each year. At the moment, we're in Year B, so you may have noticed that we've been mostly having readings from Mark's Gospel, although today we have a section from St John. At the start of the church year, Advent Sunday, we change to Year C, so we very soon will be hearing mainly from Luke's Gospel. As we listen to God's story, our story, expressed in the Bible in a range of ways, for example, poems, letters, narratives, prophecies, visions, we find it is full of human accounts of love, hate, relationship problems, wrongdoings, 
loss and grief. All issues that are as relevant today as they were then. It's through listening, reflecting and praying about what we've heard or read that we become part of that story. In Paul's letter to Timothy, we heard that scripture is inspired by God. It's there to guide us, for training in righteousness, to help us to grow in faith, knowledge and understanding. As we read, listen and learn, we become equipped for all that we might be and are being called to be as we carry out God's work in his world today here in Corbridge or wherever you may be. The Bible isn't an instruction manual with all the answers written out for us, but what is written gives us an insight into who God is and was, his earthly life, his crucifixion and death. Through the Bible, we find new ways in which we can share our faith so that others may be part of that great story too. This book, the Bible, is really important to us. Of course, sometimes we're challenged by what we read, and that's good. It's important to have to think deeply about what we're hearing or reading. True learning and understanding in this sense changes the way we think and act. As we read the Bible, we're invited into a pattern of living the gospel, living the good news of God. Here is a personal invitation into a relationship with God, an invitation to live in Christ and to live as Christ. Tom Wright, previously Bishop of Durham and now Senior Research Fellow at Wycliffe Hall, the University of Oxford, says the Bible gives us the first scenes of the story and we know where it will all end, when Jesus comes again in triumph. But now we need to be so immersed in the scriptures that we become part of the story too. And what an exciting prospect, not only to imagine ourselves part of the story, but to actually be part of that great story. Of course, this isn't something that happens overnight. We need to invest in reading, reflecting and spending time with the Bible to become so proficient in the story that it tells that it starts to shape the way in which we live. So how do you read the Bible? How do I read the Bible? How does the person sitting next to you read the Bible? We all do it differently because we're all very different. We need to engage with God's word in the way that's best for us. We need to find a method and a rhythm that suits us personally. What works for one person may not work for the next. What is important is spending that time with God and reading his word. When we read the Bible may depend on how we live our life. Is it easier to read in the morning, the evening, midday, or some totally different time. It doesn't matter, but what we do need to do is to make time to read properly, not with the radio on or with half an eye on the clock, but with focused attention. This means that we have to stop doing everything else and really focus on what we're doing. This is very hard for some people who rush about madly, like me, but will be easier for others who are perhaps more contemplative by nature or are at a more leisurely phase in their lives. So where do we read the Bible? My favourite place for meeting with God through scripture is sitting in a very quiet place without distractions. Sometimes that can be in my garden, my conservatory, or when I'm out for a walk in the countryside, sitting by the sea or the lake. I'm sure you have your favourite places too. I find it helps me when I'm at home to focus on what I'm doing by lighting a candle. Then I sit quietly, settle myself until I feel ready to begin. So how do we read the Bible? There are many different ways. Some people take a book of the Bible and read it in its entirety over a period of time, using a commentary or a study guide to help them. 
Other people use Bible reading notes, which guide them through a short passage of the Bible each day and provide thought-provoking comments. Some people meditate on the Bible, reading a short passage and then taking just one word or phrase and mulling it over in their mind, pondering the meaning and the implication. Others stick to the church lectionary and read the set passages for the day. There is something very moving about joining in with those across the world who are all reading the same reading each day. And then at Advent and Lent, some of those people use a book as a guide to their reading. Modern technology and the use of apps on our phones and iPads are useful as well to help us to be able to connect more readily with the Bible wherever we are. Over the last year, I've been looking at ways of enriching my spiritual life and have been experimenting with different ways of reading the Bible. I tried out an Ignatian spirituality retreat during Lent called Knowing God and it was led by the Jesuits of the Ignatian Spirituality Centre in Edinburgh. That gave me the opportunity each day to reflect on a Bible passage, some music and a picture. Then I engaged in the ancient practice of Lectio Divina, which is a practice perfected by St Benedict and is still practiced in Benedictine spirituality today. This gentle listening is a way of almost tuning in to the presence of God. On the sheet that I was given, it said, in Lectio, we read slowly, attentively, gently listening to hear a word or phrase that is God's message for us that day. We may find that there is a word or phrase which speaks to us in a personal way, which jumps out at us. This is God communicating, and we must allow ourselves time to absorb the meaning, thinking about what we read, memorising it, gently repeating it to ourselves, allowing it to interact with us. The Lectio Divina is a two-way process, not something that we do alone, but that God participates in with us. The final part of the process of Lectio Divina is resting in God. It's a kind of wordless communication, letting go of our own words, this time simply enjoying the experience of being in the presence of God. There is a handout at the back of church and on the website suggesting some books and apps that might be useful as a guide to reading the Bible. Don't forget, if you have difficulty seeing, you can also get talking books of reflection. Whenever, wherever, or how you read the Bible, God's Word, the Holy Scripture, it isn't important. What is important is that you read it or listen to it, you learn from it, act on it, and grow in faith, knowledge, and understanding. If we all take the message of the Bible seriously, if we really encounter and engage with what it has to say, imagine the kind of world that we will be living in, a world where the Bible is at the heart of every day, shaping the way we all live out our Christian faith. Let us reflect together on how we can daily feed on God's word to our soul's health. And so as we turn to prayer, let us give thanks for the gift of the Bible and pray for all who enable it to be studied, understood and loved. Almighty God, in your goodness, you have given us the scriptures to equip us for every kind of good deed. We give thanks for all who translate the Bible and pray that through their work and skill, your word may go forth 
to the ends of the earth. We give thanks for our partnership between St Andrews and Wycliffe Bible Translators Ethiopia, for the mission partners Getachew and Gazangzing, Johannes, as they seek to translate the scriptures into the rural dialects of that land. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We give thanks for all who distribute the scriptures. We pray that through the written text, your people may be built up in faith and love. We pray especially for the work of the Bible Society. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We give thanks for all whose learning interprets the scriptures and pray for biblical scholars and theologians that more light and truth may break forth from your word. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We give thanks for all preachers and teachers and pray that through the word proclaimed and shared, your church may grow in holiness and discipleship. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We give thanks for all who read the Bible in public worship, for all study groups and training courses, and pray that through the study of the scriptures, your word may find a home in the hearts of your people. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Gracious Lord, grant to us that loving your holy word, we may adorn it with obedient and Christ-like lives. To the glory of your name. Amen. We unite together in the words that Jesus himself taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Thank you for joining in our act of worship this morning. As Linda said, the leaflet of resources about how we can all read the Bible daily, you can find on our website www.standrewschurchcorbridge. Dot org dot uk. And if you live in Corbridge, there are copies on the table at the back of church. So we ask that God the Holy Spirit will empower us to love and serve the Lord this coming week. God of power, may the boldness of your Spirit transform us. May the gentleness of your Spirit lead us. May the gifts of your Spirit equip us to serve and worship you now and always. Amen. Amen. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen. God bless you all.